All right, let's talk the best beginner tips for Scythe. And these tips, they're gonna help you really get that engine up and running. They're gonna help you be super efficient. They're gonna, you know, help guide you so that you can steamroll your friends because they're not out watching these videos on how to play the game. <laughs> it's a competitive game, right? I mean, you wanna have a little bit of an edge. And especially my number one tip I know that most beginning players miss this completely. Like they are not even thinking about this tip. I completely missed it for a little while. I don't know how many games. I'm not, I don't have that good a memory, but I definitely missed it in the beginning. And it's gonna help guide you when you're making those early decisions. And those early decisions can be the difference between you just, you know, dominating and you getting worked over because in an engine building game, the faster you get that engine going, the harder it is gonna to be to stop you from, you know, taking it all the way. Okay, let's get started with number six. At number six, we have try to build three extra workers for a total of five workers. Not less and not more. If you add another worker, it's going to cost you popularity every time you produce. And that means you're gonna need some more advanced strategies to keep your popularity topped up and at the right levels. And it's gonna require a lot more board management than you're probably gonna be able to figure out when you're a new player. So yeah build three extra workers for a total of five, but do not have more than five total workers so that it only costs you power when you produce. At number five, we have know what you can produce in your starting area. Take Rasfiat, for example. They can only produce workers, oil, and metal. They can't leave their little island until they build a mech or they build a mine. So right now, you cannot produce wood and you cannot produce food. And so you've got to figure out how you're going to get out of your little island quickly to start making sure that you can chain actions. At number four, the tip is that you need to decide how you're going to get away from your starting area. Usually you're going to need to build a mech with Riverwalk or another ability or you're gonna to need to build a mine, and this is gonna allow you to expand so that you can get to the right resources. You should be doing one of these two actions by turn five to six, so that your ability to produce other resources is expanded. And just remember, when you have Riverwalk, you, necessarily, you can't necessarily get back. And so just be really careful, because sometimes you move your workers out and then you can't get back to a resource you need and you've got to have another plan. At number three, we have chaining top and bottom actions. This is one of the most crucial things you can do is to make sure that you play as many bottom actions as you can when you play a top action. And sometimes this means delaying your specific plans to do something where you can make sure and chain because everything adds up. Now, you've got to be careful that you don't ruin your plans by, you know, getting sidetracked and doing things that don't make sense for you, but you should be chaining actions as much as you absolutely possibly can so you can get that engine going, you can get that snowball rolling, and you can be, you know, building up all facets of your game. At number two, we have enlist as early as possible, but only if it makes sense for your board. So let's say you have the industrial board. That may not work for you. You may not be able to enlist right away because you know, you're know you not making any money from it. So you wanna make sure that you enlist as early as possible if it makes sense because you get paid you know, whatever the perk is, whether it's combat cards, power, popularity, or gold, you get paid when you take the bottom action if you've unlocked the enlist perk, and you get paid when your neighbors to the left and the right take that action as well. So it can be a really good passive source of money and power and popularity and combat cards. And also the short-term boost that you get can really help you in the early game to shore up some things that you may need like power when 
um, you are producing and it's costing you power. Sometimes early game, you're going to be low on power and that can help you keep your power up enough to continue to produce without necessarily wasting an action on, you know, getting that power. So just make sure that if it, you know, if you've got the right board, enlist as early as you can. Before we get to my number one tip, if the video is helping you, please go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. It helps YouTube share this content with other people that are looking for beginner site tips. And also hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so when I publish new content, you're notified. And I publish a lot. I do strategies on the biggest games. I have Kickstarter information, Kickstarter news. And so... Yeah, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. Also, I work with Noble Knight Games. I'm an affiliate of theirs. If you click on the link down in the description, I get paid a small commission. And Noble Knight Games, they have out-of-print stuff. They've got rare stuff. They've got board games and collectible card games, uh, you know, miniatures, paint. They've got everything you need. They have over 5,000 different games in stock. They've got the largest selection of games in the world. So go ahead and check them out in that link. And let's get to... Tip number one. My number one tip is looking at your board and synergizing your board strengths with your beginning faction position. So let's look at the industrial board versus the agricultural board. On the industrial board, it costs you four food to enlist and you get no money from it. On the agricultural board, you it costs you three food and you're getting three gold each time you enlist on top of that. That's a 12 gold difference if you enlist four times. That could easily be 12 to 15% of your total score. And so you've got to make sure you understand what is happening on your board and what actions are actually going to pay you and use that to base what your strategy is going to be. So, you know, you don't want to go hard on enlisting right away when you're on the industrial board because you're going to have a really, really hard time, you know, creating enough resources and, you know, having enough money because every time you take that bottom action instead of three gold, you get nothing. <laughs> I mean, it makes a huge difference in what you can do early game and to your score. So make sure you're comparing that. Hopefully these tips helped. If you have any other beginner tips you'd like to share, please make sure, go ahead, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to my subscribers. I wouldn't be here without you and I appreciate it.